I would like to introduce our keynote speaker, who will speaking, be speaking momentarily. Many of us in Ward 6 know our speaker as someone who served us well, made a good point of coming out to almost every community gathering, listening to the problems that we had, and really worked to try to solve these. The City of Saskatoon in 2016 uh, rewarded his good behavior by electing him the mayor of this great city. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Charlie Clark. Well, thank you very much, Dan. And it is, uh, it's great to be uh, able to come and join with all of you. And I must say, when um, I came up the lineup and said hello to a lot of people and saw who was here and uh, realized I was giving a keynote on immigration to a room full of people who know and live and understand and have written papers on and are researching uh, this issue and know it much better than I do. And so uh, I'm a bit intimidated in trying to add any value to, uh, to what you already know. Um, I want to start off by recognizing that we're on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. And, uh, and I do that in particular because uh, if, if uh, we're talking about immigration and how it is that we are going to come together uh, and live together uh, on this site. The treaty, the treaty and the spirit and intent of the treaty relationship that uh, as I've learned from, from elders and has been articulated is, is living in right relationship on this land, the relationship between one another and the land that we live on. And just uh, two days ago, I, I was at a, at a, a QP conference. They were, there's a provincial conference of QP members, and, and uh, I was asked to bring greetings. And Elder Peter Nippy uh, uh, was, was there. Um, he's Soto, and he, was, he talked about the word Sitsikotatwin. He, he invited all these, all the, uh, all the people who are at the conference to think about the concept of Sitsitukatwin, which is a Soto and Cree word for coming together and supporting one another. And over and over again, when I'm with uh, members of the First Nations community, elders, the message to, 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 to the non-Indigenous community is how do we work together and live together? which certainly is relevant to this issue of, of immigration in our community. And so uh, I want to, um, to, to recognize that that's, that's the context that we're trying to sort this out in our city right now. There's no question. And um, it's a fascinating time to think about the role of cities and immigration. And in the last um, six months, I've had a chance to, to do a f some interesting traveling and visiting and meeting with mayors um, from around the world that are really struggling with uh, and, and dealing with this question of, of, uh, of how do we create cities, as the world becomes more globalized, how do we create cities that are going to be successful in bringing people who are looking for a safe, place to live and raise their family and seek opportunity to do that um, in, a, in a globalizing world. Last night, shortly after tackling a skunk problem in my house, we, we had a skunk move in to my backyard and uh, I had to rush home to try and basically chase it out of the uh, the place that it was nesting to on my way over to, I just thought I'd tell you that as a funny little story that's sort of thrown our lives off a little bit. We're still not sure if it's gone, but uh, I was, I was, I had to do that almost to be late to go to the Raj Manak uh, um, me me mentorship program memorial banquet. And I was thinking about the fact that I was coming to give this address today. And Raj Manak, uh, Kenshin Manak is, is now the driving force. Raj and Kenshin, Kenshin is Raj's wife. Raj passed away um, uh, several years ago. Um, this couple who came from Kenya, first from India to Kenya in 1979, have, have left this unbelievable legacy for this city of, of this mentorship program that now involves hundreds of different people uh, from businesses all working together, figuring out how they can collaborate and, uh, and build on one another's uh, talent and expertise and knowledge. And, um, and you think of, of the impact that this, this fellow uh, and, and his wife, Raj and Kenshin, came coming to Saskatoon, looking for opportunity in 1979, 
building a life here, raising their, their families, and then leaving this incredible legacy. And, and when you hear this debate about um, does Im do immigrants, does immigration benefit communities? And, and to me, uh, the starting point for me is there's no question that, uh, that the history of our country, it is built on, on immigration and, uh, and that in this time where um, anti-immigrant sentiment is becoming an extremely powerful force in the world, uh, we have a lot of work to do to really try and bring a, a real rational and uh, um, thoughtful uh, conversation based on the facts that this is, this is the, the reality of the world we live in. And uh, the, I read a recent article in the Globe and Mail that talked about the political strife that we're seeing um, the, the rise of, of, of uh, fascism in some parts of the world, the, the rise of, of leaders like Donald Trump who's built on, on a very divisive uh, politics, that it is largely driven by anti-immigrant sentiment, by fears and by and these kinds of uh, sentiments, as much as it's driven about by economic issues. And, uh, and the argument that the, the thesis in this article was it was more about anti-immigrant sentiment than, than economic issues. And I was also at a forum recently where the president of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce, Perrin Beatty, uh, said in, in his evaluation and, and what he's seeing in, in some of his world travels, is a, he, he sort of hypothesized that we're moving from a time when the debate is between left and right in society and more to, to, to a question of whether societies will be open or closed. And I thought that was quite interesting in terms of, uh, of, the, of the time that we live in. I think that's the context that we, we need to think about uh, how we handle that debate. And we know we see it in the U.S. and we see the polarization there, but we know that, and we see it in Europe and some of the recent elections even for European governments, but we also know it's, it's a real tension in our own country, in our own communities that we, that we need to, um, to address. And, so, so one of the lenses from the, from the city building, if, as I look forward to the future of Saskatoon and what, what do we need to do to succeed, um, you know, I certainly land on the side that, to know that immigration is actually essential to the, to the success of our city and, and the success of our country. And I found it interesting that the, uh, advi the Advisory Council on Economic Growth that Bill Morneau uh, created, uh, headed by Dominic Barton, in their first, and maybe you all know this, I don't know how much you're all, this is all familiar, but out of their first top eight recommendations that they made in, in saying, what do we need to do to build, uh, make sure that we have a strong country and a strong economic growth into the future? One of those top eights was to move immigration from 300,000 to 450,000 people. So they say that if we don't uh, see increased immigration, we're not going to, to succeed. One of, and you, and the, the stats around uh, age, the age of our population in 1965, the medium age, median age of our country was 25 years old. Today, the median age of our country is 40. And in 2045, they're projecting it'll be 45 years old. And so there is an aging, the baby boomers, the aging workforce, the population, where the birth rate is not replacing that. These statistics, uh, if we want to continue to be able to have the economic uh, uh, production and output and all those things, those, then that's uh, something that actually is a reality for, for, for those who continue to say, well, immigrants are taking away jobs, immigrants become a drag on society, immigrants you know, uh, um, have this negative impact. The, the, this, the biggest blue ribbon panel in the country is saying, no, we're, we're actually in trouble without Im immigration. And, uh, and so we, that, I think, is a, a basis that I look through the, the lens of our future. But I do want to say that more important than that, and more important than, than the idea of, of people as cogs in an economic machine, is that as the world becomes more complicated, as we face more complicated issues, as we have to figure out how we're going to deal with issues of climate change, technology, automation, um, uncertain economic times, I believe firmly that diversity is the thing that we will need to bring people together to solve and tackle the issues that we're facing and to recognize the parts of the way we're doing things now 
that aren't working. That, that this is not just about, about building a stronger economy, it's about building societies that actually find a way to, to, to build on, on the talents and the knowledge and the varied experiences that people bring uh, when, they, when they move into a community and, uh, and, use, and, and use that to help us figure out how to create a better future for our children, for all of our children uh, in, in all of their diversity. And, and I think you see it in the work that you do and you see the stories and the talent and the knowledge of the people who, who, uh, who are coming here and moving here. And I, I, f I think we have to move this conversation to that this is actually the thing we will need uh, in order to build uh, a strong future. And in, this, in the city of Saskatoon, those, those same issues, I see that, that uh, you take somebody like Raj Manek coming in and Kanchan Manek and, and, and adding all this value to our community as a result of what they offer. That's what happens when you can create those opportunities. Our provincial motto states, from many peoples, strength you know and that's been tested recently with some of the, the the racism and some of the discourse and some of the 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 sentiments that 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 show where people don't believe that or they 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 can't see past the relationship between the indigenous and non-indigenous community to this idea that that's the promise of our country that's the promise of what our province says that that actually we're stronger together but we have to believe it and we have to see that in one another and so um, if we look at Saskatoon and, and some of the changes that we've gone through, and uh, um, it's interesting that uh, the statistics that I, that I uh, got recently, that there's about 42,000 first generation um, citizens in our, in our city right now. And of those 42,000, 18,000 of them arrived between 2011 and 2016. And if you look at the countries that the, those uh, people arrived from, the top four, the Philippines, Pakistan, India, and China. If you went back 25 years, it wouldn't have been quite that story. And we, you see it, we know it, we live it. Um, this is a, a reality for Saskatoon just as much as any city, that we're, we are becoming global cities. And we are at the, at the what's been gr really interesting about meeting with mayors um, from, from everywhere, from Columbus, Ohio, to Tallahassee, to uh, um, Munster, Germany, to Dublin, Ireland, is that it's in our communities that we can determine whether that is a successful experience or whether that, that uh, is something that creates inequality, polarization, uh, social disintegration, and uh, and we're on the for we're on the front lines because it's it's uh, in cities where home is, it's in cities and it's in the workplaces, the schools, the universities, the colleges, the uh, neighborhoods, in the leisure centers where people end up mixing, mingling, and determining: is this a place where I feel a sense of belonging, where I, I feel a sense of a home, or is this a place where I, uh, I don't see myself succeeding, or, or I don't feel that I have uh, full participation? And in Saskatoon, I, just to share a little example of a story, I, I, uh, my son plays soccer, and uh, I, uh, you know, on, and when your kids play soccer, that's you know, uh, often sitting on the sidelines is an interesting time to meet other people that you don't know. And so then, one day I was sitting uh, early on in the season, sitting beside a guy, and you know, we were kind of uh, figuring out a small talk, just like it often happens. And and so we started to talk. I think he knew who I was, <laughs> and uh, which always you always have to break the ice too there. But uh, I, I started to chat with him a bit and ask him. Uh, about his, uh, you know, who is he? What does he do? His, his name was Adil, and he moved in uh, to Saskatoon in 2009, I think, uh, as a temporary foreign worker with Boston Pizza. And um, he actually, once we started talking, wanted me to know how much he has appreciated this city, that he came from Morocco, he came uh, as a ref, or as a temporary foreign worker, but in a, in a not a very good, stable uh, si situation for his family in there. Did, did not feel good about uh, his kid's future there, and searched around, you know, different places to live, and and then through this program ended up um, working in in Saskatoon, and and found it to be such a, a warm place because of the people that he committed to to um, getting past the 
temporary foreign worker program and managed to, uh, to work his way into uh, employment in the food industry and citizenship. His wife is still, uh, is still trying to tackle her citizenship test and, 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 and dealing with the language barriers and some of those things, but she's here and he has two sons who are here and they were playing soccer together. And, um, and he, his description of how he feels the sense of home here and how how important that is to him was very was very profound from from uh, from for me hearing um, because you all you know as parents just how important it is that you want to create a, a safe place for your kids and one of the ways that he um, well actually it was a ne the next meeting we were talking the next soccer practice we were talking a bit more he said I want to show you something and he showed me on his phone an image that he had of a of a of a, a little slip of paper that had been given to the employees at the Sheraton Hotel uh, during Christmas. This was just before Christmas time. And the employees at the Sheraton Hotel, uh, the uh, employer offered them to each have turkeys as part of the Christmas, um, uh, as a sort of a Christmas bonus. And on the slip it said, and if you, wanna, if you are, uh, want a halal turkey, then, then uh, we can make arrangements for that. And he said, this is what it means. This is, what, this is why this city is uh, or the people who he that he met with that that helped him feel like there was something uh, belonging, and he, and he shared the story of of the of the gentleman who helped him to get uh, employment at the Sheraton, and and uh, and how he met his family when they came to the airport, and he just these were his experiences that that made that made his experience here so uh, so real, and. Um, a little while later, then we were out there. They had a kids and coaches, a kids and parents soccer practice to end off the season. And so then uh, I was out there playing against him. He's deadly with his feet, and um, and all. And his son uh, Orion, who is 12, who's my son's age, and then his little his littler son Kassan, who's about five and um and and it was just awesome being out there sweating and playing and i'm trying to check him and you know and and i think this is the way that we we form relationships it's in these it's in these places that you you overcome that sort of uh gap and that the the uh, the uncertainty when you're first sitting side by side about how do i break the ice uh, to into playing soccer together and knowing more about his own personal story we all have to find a way to create those opportunities within our community. Because I know that as much as Adil's got a very, very favorable experience, that's not the experience of everybody who moves here. And, uh, and that, that uh, all of you who are working with settlement agencies um, and all of you who are working with new immigrants who are, are coming to our community are seeing people who come with a dream and a promise and, and stories of, of tremendous opportunity in Canada and then find that getting housing is very difficult, getting childcare is very difficult, getting transportation in our city uh, and our transit system is a challenge. And breaking into the workforce uh, is a real, is a real um, a barrier. And so I think uh, one of the questions that I saw that's being discussed is: is uh, in a smaller city like Saskatoon, what is that? What's what? What role do we have, and how how does uh, what role do smaller cities play in trying to tackle immigration? And from what I can tell, it's sort of a double-edged sword being a smaller community. The sense of warmth and belonging and and uh, and openness that, that that exists here, I think, is real. And I hear that from many many newcomers who say this city is a friendly city. It's a city where I I don't uh, I I feel like people still look you in the eye and they still say hello and they still um, there's still that sense of of uh, small town community that's a strength. But smaller cities can also be tight networks, right? That that have I don't hate to say it, but old boys clubs and 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 well-established uh, business networks and and groups that are are also hard to break into and and companies that are used to hiring people that are are familiar and uh, and who they know and they know their family and they know the family of the family and um, and so you you have to find a way to sort of to and this is something that's been going on in our city dramatically in the last ten years is is how do you actually start to create a more cosmopolitan global city that 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 is not based on on these sort of smaller networks and i i think we have to find a way to grow 
and keep both. We, I think keeping that sense of community that we have, that so many people in other parts of Canada and especially in other parts of the world are looking for that warmth of a, a community where you have a sense of belonging. That's a strength that we have to build on, but then also uh, creating workplaces and schools and neighborhoods and sports systems and all that that really know how to welcome people from many, many backgrounds in to become part of of the life of the community. And uh, and I know that the city of Saskatoon is, we're, we're sorting this out our, our, on our own in terms of uh, ourselves, I mean, as a city in terms of our own hiring practices and, and recognizing the ways that that um, doing things the way we've always done can become a barrier to actually truly creating shared and, and equal opportunity for everyone. And I want to recognize April Sora is here and, uh, and has been this incredible uh, uh, force for helping um, bring about change at a very, very difficult, you know, a, a very dynamic time and at times difficult time um, for the city. And I see a lot of our staff who are, who are helping and, and figuring out how to make Make this change and uh, and we have a great deal of work to do and um, we have the local immigration partnership which uh, which we're um, developing now and I just got a uh, the, the up-to-date briefing on on the success that uh, Athnas uh, uh, Najiru is that how I say his last name Najiru is um, has been driving forward with the sector meetings and with with this um, with this very collaborative approach to to bringing the different parts of this story together learning from one another and then and then helping to coordinate a, an effort to uh, to drive some uh, some different thinking, some different approaches, some best practices, all, all those things that we need to do. And so we're really happy to be able to leverage federal funding um, to uh, to be able to make that happen. And it's it's kind of it's great to have Joe Garcia here too because uh, you know. April's here because Joe wrote a report in 2013 <laughs> that, along with Ken Pontikis that, that did that analysis uh, it sort of after a surge of immigration, you know, and, and in the midst of, of a lot of the, uh, the, the pickup on immigration. And, and so this is the story of a community learning, right, and, and, and figuring this out. And, and, uh, and so it's, um, it's, a, it's a fascinating time for us to be uh, sorting through and and um, and uh, and learning about how we're going to build such a city. And I, I, the other thing that gives me hope in Saskatoon is I get a chance to be at quite a few functions where where different uh, groups are working together and 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 bringing um, whether it's based on faith or based on culture, uh, people together. I, in particular, you know, recognize like Imam Elias from the Islamic Association, who, um, along with uh, Rabbi Claudio from uh, Agudas Israel and Dr. Kumar from the uh, from the Hindu Society, uh, which um, uh, and and uh, the Bangladeshi community, and uh, Mr. Norris is here as a, as a honorary consul, which is I think a, a sign of of many of these of the coming together, um, so that. The dialogue happens among, and, and actually our bishop and Bishop Bolin when he was here, and now Bishop Hagem, uh, Hageman um, uh, from the Christian religions and the Hindu, uh, Muslim, Hindu, all coming together and, and with the First Nations community and, uh, as well, where there's dialogue happening. Uh, those are where we can sort of build strength that then can be pushed outwards into those networks and into those communities to think about how we learn and grow. So we have the settlement agencies and the integrated work happening there. And then I think we have some community dialogues and conversations that are happening that are very important. That it, and it all comes down to relationship building. All comes down to the overcoming the fear and, and the, um, the, the, and What's the word I'm thinking of? The apprehension that, that starts when, you, when you're meeting across cultures and differences to find a way to, to find that common ground and, and build confidence in one another. Um, and as the mayor of this city, I, my goal is that we, if we work together and we, uh, and, we, and we find the way to build those relationships, that in a world that's becoming increasingly polarized and facing the, 
that those very real tensions that I talked about at the beginning, uh, that we can show that it is possible to build a society that's truly global and, and where people have shared opportunity and can succeed together. And, and, and in a city of the size of Saskatoon, I think we're perfectly positioned to, uh, to figure that out. And, as, and I especially feel hopeful about it because of who is here working every day uh, so hard to, to make that progress. And, and, and the, I see the leaders of our settlement agencies here and, and I, I see business leaders who are starting to step into this world and I see, uh, um, I know we have a council that is very committed to this. I'm really proud to work with my, my fellow city councillors who have uh, stated that reconciliation, inclusion and diversity are a key priority for our city. Um, but it, we have to always keep our foot on the gas for this and we have to always recognize that there are forces that are going to try and work against this uh, at every step along the way. So I'm, I want to support you uh, so that we can together uh, have this outcome for our children. And because I think as many First Nations elders to go back, I guess at the end of my speech to what I talked about, um, that I've at the beginning of uh, ceremonies or, or, or talks say, let's put our children in the center of this conversation. And everything we do, let's think about what the future that we're trying to create for all of our children. And that that be a sort of a, a baseline or a North Star to, to help guide our questions. If we can do that, um, then I think there's some common ground that, that, we, can, that we can put together and, and create a city that we f truly feel proud of for the next generations to come. And so, so I'm committed to that and I look forward to working with all of you uh, for that outcome. Thank you very much. Fantastic, Mayor. Um, yeah. Now I understand you, you only gave us uh, you're, like I recognize your time is tight. Do you want to take time for questions? Yeah, I have time for questions. Okay. Um, let's get our first three questions. My question. We talk about the cities and about the places to live. Sorry. I know you are doing something about it, but there has to be more about places to live. Housing? Yes. Because the, we have many immigrants who are coming with eight, nine children, plus the parents. And the city is not appropriate for that. So they, whether they construct bigger houses, bigger apartments, because this is a common problem. Also, with the whole infestation of bed bugs and also on, some of our clients are losing the furniture. The one is giving them extra money for to buy more. So I don't know. I know it's a very difficult situation, but I know you're trying to do your best, but just think about how can we implement that for the future. So I have a question, because there's more vacancy now we, we we have a we have sort of we went through a, where we were at two percent vacancy and then now we're we're more at uh, up around i think nine or ten um so what are the biggest housing needs right now bigger families is one uh and i know that there's some projects that are being built now that have more like three or four bedrooms instead of just one or two but i appreciate that um, I'm interested to know when, when it comes to housing, wh what, um, what are people finding given the housing market? I know affordable housing is the other one because even if there's a vacancy, that's, it's expensive. Is there anything else that you can let me know about? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we do have a, our own program now yeah, where we do in property maintenance and, pro and housing inspection. Um, we uh, um, are working on uh, this crime-free multi-housing initiative in terms of working with landlords to make sure. Uh, and we're getting to a point where we may, with some of the most chronically terrible landlords, uh, have to bring in the stick in a bigger way to... Uh, um, to deal with uh, with some of the v chronically very very unsafe housing that's out there, the federal money that's been identified for the housing strategy uh, also creates an opportunity to do repair on on housing, and we're going to try and leverage as much as we can of that. We don't own the housing, so we have to facilitate it. But uh, I appreciate that this is a this is still a big challenge. 
Thank you very much, Mayor, for your commitment to uh, diversity, inclusion, and therefore support for immigration. As you are uh, quite um, aware, for the past four years or so, the province sort of subsumed its immigration ministry under, you know, number of layers. And now the new premier has brought uh, it to the forefront with a new Ministry of Immigration and Careers Training. I know you are very much engaged with the province in terms of number of other areas. So I was wondering whether you think immigration is one that also needs to be engaged with yeah. the province. Yeah, I mean, um, I think that the arc of the province with the having the immigrant nominee program and then and then ending the no immigrant nominee program and then figuring out what the next steps has been something I've been in conversation with the community about because we did see, you know, a, a tremendous amount of that uh, immigration was was driven very much by the uh, SINP, and then when it ended, it created some uncertainty and and. Uh, uh, situations where, where families were, were left in the lurch and um, so I think it is good that, that this has been brought forward. I'm, I'm actually meeting with uh, the Premier next week um, and so I, I will be interested to understand what his what he's looking at. My message to the government uh, you know, on almost any file is that whatever decisions you make it's in our communities that they uh, that they play out and this was um, a comment that was made in, when I was in Washington D.C. by by uh, by actually the head of the Latin American uh, Business Council. Whatever decisions are made in Washington, they land at the feet of mayors. That was the comment, right? And so, uh, and I thought, oh, we could just put Ottawa in, and then it's the same, right? So. <laughs> Uh, same thing with Regina, and and so uh, we want to be partners. We have the we have the relationships, we have the talent in the community, we have the organizations. We can bring people together. We need the province to work with us on how to make those most successful, and that's been. Uh, sometimes it's felt that the province has not always kind of understood the nuances at the community level, and I know it's hard because they have to deal with with the whole of the province, but uh, we're, we're really working to try and have as open and active a, a problem-solving approach as we can, and, and uh, so I'll be interested to hear more. I don't know a lot about what the vision is behind the new ministry, but I, I will continue to advocate everything I've just said today. Yeah. Our final question will be. Uh, hi, Mr. Uh, Premier. Uh, thank you for your I, I am Zeynep from Saskatoon Open Door Society. I work with the Resettlement Assistant Program and the RAP Program. I am the one, first of all, the family when they arrive to Canada or to Saskatoon, I am welcoming them. And from my experience, I just want to add, uh, beside my colleague Maria, she mentioned uh, we do have several families, they arrive and they do have some health issue, look like they need uh, to use a wheelchair. And the options to find a place for it. these families, it's very hard to have a, a building with the elevator. Uh, another comment I want to mention also. Uh, in our office, we do have uh, two programs. As usual, every day we are receiving more than uh, 50 or 40 people, uh, clients, they came to our office. Uh, part from our responsibility, to call, for example, rental housing supplement, uh, CRA, uh, child tax benefit, uh, for any reason they came our clients. My concern, if that's possible in near future, can you help us as, uh, to open door society to have um, a line access to call them without waiting long time? Because when we are calling for rental supplement, we have to wait around one hour, one hour and a half to have access to someone can respond to us. Right. And it will be very tough with our time. You know, when I am, I am not taking vacation as usual, but when I am taking vacation, I saw it's long time when I am at home. But at work, even with the seven hours and a half, it's not enough to our uh, job. Thank you. Did, thank you. Did you bring this up with Minister Hussein last night? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I um, 
I appreciate what you're saying and that, that those type, when your life is in the lurch and you, you don't know where you're going to land housing, if you're going to have income, how, uh, how f stressful that can be. And, and that um, even I know from my own experience trying to get a passport and when you're, if you're coming close, the very small experience that uh, I have when, when government lines and bureaucracies are, your life is in their hands, um, is, uh, is challenging. The city has very little, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't want to give you a false impression that, that I can, that the city of Saskatoon can affect how the, in Ottawa, these decisions are made. It's so uh, complicated, the, 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 the bureaucracy of these, of these lines and so on. But uh, at that being said, uh, um, you know, when Minister Hussein was here uh, last time and, and uh, I did run into him yesterday, uh, we can continue to have a common voice to say, let's make this as streamlined as possible. Let's deal with these, um, uh, you know, um, barriers to, to people getting services as much as possible. And I can, you know, I can uh, reflect that as well. But uh, I don't have a special red phone line to him to sort of get him to change this or that. It's... Uh, we're, we're on the bottom of the chain, you know, through, through the, uh, the levels of government. But I appreciate how important that is to... Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking the mayor.